Next up from iSpot TV is Stuart Schwartz Apfel. Um, and there he is. Take it away, Stuart. Thanks, Robbie. Um, excited to be here today um, at the uh, First Look 2023 OTT virtual conference. Um, appreciate everyone taking the time to hear me out. Um, I'm Stu Schwartz Apfel. I lead the media partnerships team here at iSpot. Um, and that means that me and my team spend a whole lot of time with super smart people and clients and partners across the sell side ecosystem. So that includes TV networks, digital publishers, MVPDs, SVODs, AVODs, all the VODs. Um, but we spent, we spend a lot of time with smart people, a lot of whom hopefully are, are, are listening and, and attending the conference today. Um, talking about a, a broad range of things, CTV measurement among them. Um, and as I, as I kind of sat and prepared for today's presentation, you know, thinking about the why person level measurement is so important, um, it occurred to me how blurry the lines are between linear and OTT, right? A lot of people cutting the cord, but those lines are actually pretty blurry, right? When you think about live sports, on, on places like Amazon and Hulu and more to come. When you think about virtual MVPDs like Fubo that are serving national ad loads that look and feel just like linear, right? Except that they're being streamed and they don't come from a cable box, right? When you think about all this nuance and all this blurriness, despite the divide between traditional linear and streaming, right? That's kind of why iSpot feels so strongly about the need for accurate, at scale, person level measurement, no matter how or where an audience is consuming content, right? Focusing on household alone, we feel really only represents half the picture, right? Who is watching is just as important as how many are watching. And that is really what we're here to discuss today. Um, next slide, please. We see three primary ingredients, if you will, if you will, to you know, proper person level measurement. Um, we think there needs to be a strong measurement footprint in place, right? Some people would call that a panel, but um, you know, different than Nielsen, we focus on ACR technology that comes from smart televisions. Um, so it's for us, it's more of a footprint than a panel, but nonetheless having a strong panel to, from which to draw from, um, having demographics applied to the impressions being derived off that panel, right? To understand and contextualize the people that are in that household and what they look like and how old they are and what ethnicity they are and all that good stuff, right? And then of course, what we're really here to focus about today is, is co-viewing, right? How many people are, are in the room at any given time, right? It's you know, if three people live in a house, but every every Thursday night for must have TV, um, you know, the high school kids have a viewing party with five of their friends, then that goes beyond the three people in the household, right? We want to make sure we're giving that show or that ad credit for how many people truly saw it, right? So again, we feel like these are the three primary ingredients to um, best in class person level measurement. Um, next slide, please. So as I mentioned, having a strong footprint, right? So iSpot is very focused on smart TVs and ACR. Um, and in fact, we have the largest ACR footprint in the measurement industry at the moment, um, combining the strength of Vizio and LG, as well as a number of smaller manufacturers um, to, to tally 40 million smart TVs in our footprint and 52 million total devices. Now, the reason why the total devices are greater than the total number of smart TVs in our footprint is because we use set-top box to calibrate. So even though we don't have set-top box as a direct input to our footprint itself, it's not incorporated into our panel, it is absolutely used in a, in a very automated and programmatic way to calibrate our panel, to make sure that we're not missing anything, to account for any biases that may exist. Um, so, so definitely a strong ACR footprint um, that we like, um, not just because it's future proof, 
as cable subscriptions continue to go down, but also because of the speed that it affords us um, and the ability for us to do rapid reporting uh, for all of our clients on the buy and the sell side uh, using that. Next slide, please. Now, if you recall, the, the second bucket in the kind of list of ingredients, if you will, was demographics. And we partner with Epsilon for our demographic backbone. Um, and that helps us to really, as I said, contextualize what the age, gender, income, and ethnicity looks like for those millions and millions and millions of smart televisions that make up our ACR footprint, right? And that is kind of the first layer of, of data contextualization that we do once we detect an ad and once we apply an impression to an ad and understand the viewability of an ad is understanding what the demographics are of that impression that's being attributed. Next slide, please. But, you know, that is not enough, right? Um, we need, you know, understanding how many people have seen something or how many households have been exposed to something is super important, right? But personifying is, is equally important, right? We, we want to understand how many people are watching at any given time and we want to be able to do that at scale across all of television. And that is, you know, not an easy thing to do. Um, so we look to our partners at T-Vision who have a panel of nearly 6,000 homes that they are monitoring from the standpoint of person level measurement. Now, I, I want to stress that this is non creepy measurement, right? They're not, they're not, they don't have a camera that's watching you in all of the rooms that a TV exists to see how many people are in the room. It's, it, it's definitely uh, not that way. In a, in a totally non-creepy way, they are monitoring how many people are in the room. They do that with technology that detects the presence of a human being, right? As far as the tech is concerned, you're kind of a, you're kind of a blob, right? With no definition. They don't know your gender, what you're wearing. They just know that there's more than one human in the room or there's more than two humans in the room. Um, and we cross-reference that T-Vision data with our Epsilon data, right? So if we know that there are three people in the household, but T-Vision is detecting five in the room, the, the data scientists can say to themselves, well, it seems like there are additional people in that home that don't live there, right? So that's an important input for us. But this is also important because we need to think about the difference in co-viewing behaviors across all of television and all of streaming, right? The way people consume a rerun of an old TV show before they go to bed is far different than the co-viewing behavior exhibited by people who are watching a tentpole moment for sports or who are having a viewing party for the Oscars, right? Or the red carpet viewing party, right? We just had the Oscars the other night. So we know that there is a vast swing in how many people are sitting in front of that screen, depending on what type of programming there is. So we need norms and data points that touch all of them. Um, and that's, that's really the thinking with T-Vision, that we can have a consistent number that is constantly being updated that we can apply to all of the networks that we track. And that is applicable, not just to people who watch basketball on TBS or TNT, but maybe they watched it on League Pass or maybe they watched it on uh, you know, NBA.com, right? There are so many ways to consume content. The co-viewing needs to follow all of it. Um, next slide, please. Now, the, the co-viewing factors are determined each day across every network, as I mentioned, and, th and they're refreshed every 30 minutes, right? And, and that applies to all linear programming, ads that air during linear programming, and, and across all networks. Now, when I say linear, um, next slide, please. When I say linear, I wanna reference back to my comment at the beginning of this presentation, right? Linear is so blurry these days, right? People are consuming linear ad loads via traditional television, as well as via a dongle or via um, a, a streaming television or a smart TV, right? So. That is why we are applying these co-view factors in the same way across 
somebody who's watching basketball on traditional linear, someone who's watching basketball on via streaming or via a virtual MVPD, right? We're being consistent. Um, now, as far as digital devices are concerned, there's some nuance there, right? Somebody holding an iPad and streaming a piece of content or holding a tablet and streaming a piece of content, the, the likelihood that, that, that they are doing that with multiple people alongside them is significantly lower than it is for a primary or a secondary TV in the household, right? So we apply a co-viewing factor of one for digital devices for that reason. You know, over time that may evolve. I, I always make the joke that my six-year-old daughters huddle around a, a tiny little screen almost as a, a preference to, to a big television. Um, but I think when it comes to, you know, the P18 plus universe that we're tracking ads against, you know, at this time, that's probably not the case, but we'll certainly keep our eye on it. So, so uh, next slide, please. And, you know, I think this all kind of leads us to, I, I'm sure um, some of you may have read about this, um, uh, about a month back, iSpot actually announced um, an investment, a strategic investment with our partners at, at T-Vision. Um, and that investment for $16 million um, is not only to, you know, because we believe in what T-Vision is doing and because we feel so strongly in the need for person level measurement in, in the modern measurement future, right? But also because it afforded iSpot a lot of unique benefits that we are going to bring to market as a part of this partnership and this strategic investment. Um, one of those, I would say probably the most exciting one on, on the list for us is gaining exclusive access to T-Vision's digital code view, right? So a few moments ago, I, I mentioned that we have a uniform approach to code, to, go, to code viewing currently between linear and streaming. And we think that's a smart thing to do at this time. But if we could have a, a bespoke code view factor for digital that was derived from digital panelists within T-Vision's panel, we feel like you know, as streaming continues to proliferate, that that is really the type of precise measurement the, the industry needs, right? Having a bespoke co-view factor for linear, a bespoke co-view factor for digital. So as a part of our investment in T-Vision, iSpot will gain access to that exclusive digital co-view. Um, another exciting part of the investment is around competitive CTV intelligence. A lot of people know iSpot for the media measurement that we do, the ad detection right? Where did Snickers run for the last three years across all networks, right? Where did Pepsi run? Where did Coke run? That's why a lot of brands use us is for that syndicated ad intelligence. Up until now, it's been very linear focused. The future obviously is us bringing a sister, a sister product to market that focuses on the flip side of that media intelligence, the, the, the CTV side, the streaming side. Where did Snickers and Coke and Pepsi run across all of streaming and how can we make that data syndicated um, and widely available in the same way that we do our linear data so that um, that is that is the another benefit that we get from the partnership um, but overall it exhibits our belief in the importance of person level measurement and personification of data um, and um, that is all i have for you guys today and i, I really appreciate you having me and i hope you enjoy the rest of the conference so, Stu, I know we're going to um, talk a little bit more um, as a group, but uh, two questions from the audience for you. Um, first, privacy invasion. Should it be paid by each house that's being measured? Your thoughts? Privacy invasion. Um, well, I, I'm not sure I fully understand the, qu the question, but let me attempt to break it up. Um, yeah. We, we have a large group of engineers that do nothing but make sure that we are compliant with every single kind of regulation that is bestowed upon us. That includes privacy, COPA, and a whole, a whole lot more. So our T-Vision partnership is absolutely within compliance from that standpoint. I'm not sure uh, what they meant about paying, but. Okay, I'm not sure who asked the question, but if you want to drop a, a question in the general chat. I'm sure Stu will get back to you. And the second question, 
Um, couldn't the use of set-top box, by definition, bias the calibration away from cord cutters or cord nevers, or is it just used as a viable sample? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Yeah. Yeah, we, we definitely don't want to use it to bias. I think we use it to, it's almost like a gut check, right? If we're seeing very <laughs> dominant trends in any one direction, and set-top box is telling us something that's wildly different, then that gives our... QA team kind of a, a, a hot lead to chase down, yeah. right? So it, it almost raises a red flag and then allows us to look into that further. Okay. Good things to, to chew on. Um, so let's just keep going and continue to talk about non-creepy measurement and, and all of its arms and legs. 